also known as that gratitude guy, is a former Nordstrom store manager with a long history of motivating and inspiring people to be the very best they can. Is there a way to make it louder? Draws from his own experiences of Any better? Yes, thank you. Jumping mm -hmm. out of planes, becoming a national champion hydroplane driver, flying off of cliffs, and leaping over bridges, all to test what he himself was made of. Ultimately, he considers his greatest achievement as being the very proud father of what he calls his rock star son. David Brooke knew from as early as 19 years of age that he wanted to become a speaker to help inspire and motivate others. That drive became a passion to champion and illustrate the immense power of a gratitude mindset. With over 1,000 videos posted on YouTube and an equal 1,000 subscribers to his channel, that gratitude guy has become a leading influencer in transforming people's lives. His stories are terrific, very relevant and relatable. You inspired a room full of people with developmental disabilities and their families. David now travels the world speaking about gratitude and just recently completed a national coast to coast tour. One of those events boasted the attention of 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base Lewis McCord in Washington state. Now an international best-selling author, David's written many books on the subject of gratitude, including the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal and six word lessons to embrace gratitude. Studies have shown that when practicing an attitude of gratitude, people experience less aches and pains. Extensive clinical research has shown that individuals who are consistently grateful enjoy a happier existence <laughs> and better relationships. So if better relationships, better sleep, better physical, mental, and psychological health sound good to you, and you'll want to pay close attention to what you're about to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome that gratitude guy, David George Brooke. There you go. Thank you for the virtual clapping there. It's still, as I've adapted, oops, here's a couple of more. As I've adapted to Zoom, it's been so different to... Uh, I used to do this in person. I'm, I've actually got appointments now or talks now scheduled in 2021 that'll be back in person again, assuming we get back to normal. But it's, uh, it's really funny. You say something funny in Zoom and you see all these faces like, but you don't hear anything. And it's just like kind of strange. Like, I thought that was funny. So as I mentioned, conquering pandemic anxiety with gratitude and to have the piece of paper or a pad of paper, you may want to capture some content and take some notes. So that's important too. I will tell you just to start off with, to give you a little bit more history about me. I don't go into on the video about my early life when my mother died when I was relatively young of cancer. My father, they were divorced. He committed suicide when I was just a few years after that in my 20s. And then later on, my wife passed away. You saw the pictures of my two sons. They're now 26 and 36. They were four and 14 at the time that she passed away. And the reason I bring this up is not to, let me mute everybody here. Hold on, you all. Not to uh, mute all, there we go. Uh, let's get some sounds out of there. And, and not to, is it to feel sorry for me or I think we could go to every single person on this call and find out some tragedies and traumas that had happened to them. It was more about, I had to find some sort of coping mechanism. And to me, the coping mechanism turned out to be gratitude. And even though I'd already had a pretty positive attitude about things, I've always been a pretty energetic uh, person. I was telling Kathy earlier, I'll apologize up front for talking fast. I've always talked fast. It's the only way I know how to talk. When I talk slow, I think or other people talk slow. Sometimes it's a little harder to keep up. So I pack a lot of stuff into an hour and I'm very passionate about gratitude. And that's why I probably tend to go faster than I should. But the first thing that I'll tell you is it all depends on how you look at something. We've all heard of the glass half full and the glass half empty. And there's a part in that video where people are going like this, where is it clockwise or counterclockwise? I do that when we're in person. And the whole idea is to illustrate, it depends on how you look at it. Now, I got to think there's close to 30 people on this call. We'll see if there's any others that pop in, but it doesn't matter if I've spoken to one and I've spoken to 10,000 soldiers, as you heard in the video. So to me, if I can get through to one person today about giving them a shift of their mindset to a gratitude mindset, which is where gratitude focuses on what you have versus what you don't have. One of the things I'll say two or three times today, gratitude turns what you have into enough. 
It is so important. It helps you to focus on what you have, but it does go back to that basic central thing of how you look at something. When I was in my thirties, I was doing a lot of racing. I actually ran a marathon at one point, but up until that point, I'd run a 10 K, a lot of 10 Ks. And there was one that went from Medina of course, where the floating bridge is and the old toll booth into Husky stadium. And as I'm running halfway across the, uh, the floating bridge and I get towards the high rise towards where those fountains used to be, you know, I'm just struggling. There's all these people in front of me. And, and I think, you know, something just occurred to me. Let me just see who's behind me. And as I'm chugging along, you know, I'm just not doing that well. And I look behind me and there's just thousands of people all the way across the bridge, up into the, the high rise on the east side, the toll plaza, and then towards where Medina was. That's where the race started, over Lake Golf Course. And as I turned around and I'm still just pumping away and I, got, I felt a little better because I was in front of a lot of people. And then it just occurred to me and I thought, you know, if all the people in the front of me were not here today, I would be in first place. I mean, just think about it. What if all those people had just said, you know what? I'm not going to do the race today. You know, I'm just too tired and just all happened to be. So then I'd be out front and then all those other people behind me would be behind me and I'd be in first place. So it depends a lot on how you look at something. And speaking of looking at something, let's talk about the silver linings of coronavirus. There's all these negative things associated with people passing away and having trouble breathing and ventilators and all the things we've become all too familiar with. I was doing a talk sometime recently and somebody said, okay, Mr. Gratitude guy, he's kind of a smart ass. You know, what is there to be positive? about coronavirus and I said well let's let's talk about a few things and think about this technology that we have these computers and how the bandwidth has allowed something like zoom to happen this wouldn't have been able to be possible probably five or ten years ago zoom itself is incredible look at this we get to see each other some people are on the camera some are just on audio there's all this time we created with our family when I grew up there was family dinner nobody knows what that is these days but with the kids out of school and back home there's a lot more family dinners and family time which they'll remember forever and so I think about that. I'm sure with the science we have today, there'll be a vaccine pretty soon. There's these efficiencies. The guy that did that video, Scott Burns, I used to drive an hour out towards Everett to meet with him at Starbucks. And an hour back, I live in Issaquah. And, and, and an hour together. And I spend three hours for one hour of coffee. Now I spend one hour on Zoom. Good to see you, Scott. Take care. So the efficiencies are crazy. All these conveniences. I haven't been to a grocery store in probably five or six months, I get Amazon fresh, knock, knock on the door and there it is. And that's so convenient. No time, no gas, no parking, no going inside. It's incredible. The community, look at all the faces you can see on Zoom and the people you get to know, we're all in this together. So there's a sense of community. Even though we have to social distance, there's still that sense that we're all going through, through something together. And I know this from after Dana passed away and I went to a support group. When you find people that have gone down the same path with you, there's a level of support that support groups give you that make it so much, not so much easier, but at least more palatable, palatable to handle. And I think lastly, embracing gratitude. It's, it's my middle name now, gratitude. And I think that gratitude helps you to realign your priorities and find out what's really important. And when you focus on what you have versus what you don't have, all of a sudden things look a lot better and your outlook is a lot better. And as I said, gratitude turns what you have into enough. My father took his own life and I wasn't real happy about that. There was five of us kids. And one of the things, he was just the most negative person I've ever met, just sadly, but it was true, my own father. And I'd say good morning to him and he'd go, what's good about it? And I just thought, what kind of answer is that to one of five children? What's good about it? And I'd look outside and I'd say, it's a beautiful day out today. It's sunny and everything. It's going to rain tomorrow. I thought, wow. And I'm one of the more positive people you're going to meet. So it does come down to how you look at something. So first exercise, take out your piece of paper and your pen. And here's what I want you to do at the top of that pad. I'm going to give you um, about 45 seconds to do this. I want you to write two words. You are, Y-O-U-A-R-E. You are, write that at the top somewhere uh, and get ready to write a few things underneath it. Now, here's what I want you to do. Unlike in a group where I have people pair up, all of you are kind of individuals. So I want you to, for a moment, for about 60 seconds, 45 seconds, I want you to picture yourself being somebody else. Maybe your mother, your father, maybe your spouse, maybe your best friend, but whoever is your biggest cheerleader, I want you to write this from, your, from their perspective, not yours. And here's what I want you to do. I, I'll give you again about 30 to 45 seconds. I want you to write as many things that they would describe you as. You are energetic. You are happy. You are talented. You are creative. However they would see you, I want you to write as many words as you can, 30 to 45 seconds, go.
Okay, that's about 45 seconds. Now, here's what I'd like you to do. And the people that are on the um, phone only and not on audio only and no camera, uh, if you can use the chat, I've got the chat box open because I want you to respond to this if you can. For those of you that know how to use the chat, please put in your answer. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to silently read down those four or five or 10 things that you just wrote down and as you read slowly how that person describes you and how the qualities that you possess and how you are to them, I would like to know after you're done reading it with a high five in the screen or a high five in the chat, how many people feel a little bit better after you read those words that those people describe you as? High five, one, two, three, four, five six, seven, eight. And for those of you, again, if you can put it in the chat, just type in high five. Thank you all, the, all you camera people. So there's an example. That's a 45 second example of how having a gratitude mindset will impact you. Just by seeing how that pr person sees you, it makes you feel better and it bumps you up a little bit. Well, when you think about all you're grateful for, that's what has the same effect. When I do this in person, I have two people that, that line up or line up, I should say, pair up and stuff. And it could be like, I see Diane Collier. It could be Diane and David. I've never met Diane, but if you take this little card and write, you are Diane, and she writes, you are David, even just by introducing yourself to somebody, Diane, nice to meet you, and you shake hands, and then you write that, it's amazing how people just nail people. You are energetic, you are happy, you have a great smile, you know, the different things. And so, that's why I like doing that so much because it's definitely something that shows you what gratitude can do. And it's one of my illustrations of that. So, and I will tell you, there's a lot of things I used to not tell, but I tell more as I've done this. I was saying to Kathy Burroughs that I do two or three talks a week and I love doing this. And then probably until I'm doing one or two a day, I'm not going to be happy because I'm so passionate about spreading this gratitude word. But I will tell you years ago, I used to call myself a word out loud that I would say to myself that I've never said again since about 10 or 15 years ago. And I'm not going to tell you what the word is, but I'll spell it for you. And the word was L-O-S-E-R. And I thought to myself, what? It finally hit me one day. What are you doing? Why are you calling yourself that? If you don't advocate for yourself, who else is going to advocate for you? And I'm just thinking things had gone bad. And I thought, so I stopped doing that. And I started focusing on all those strengths that I had. And so that's why that is so powerful. And you saw how many hands went up. Did anybody get in the chat, by the way? Oh, there's a high five. Great. Thank you. Okay, Burroughs, Joanne Swanson, and Susan are hey, raising our hands. Excellent. Joanne and Susan are together. Perfect. So that's the impact in that. We're going to do a couple more exercises that will illustrate that even further, but that's a good way to get you started. So that's how you look at things. The next thing is harnessing gratitude's power. And as I keep saying, gratitude turns what you have into enough, but there's also another element that's really important. You just can't give up. When Connor and Kyle were four and 14, their mother died, my wife, Dana, and she was 38 years old and she died of a prescription pill overdose. And they both struggled, whoa, they both struggled mightily. And it was especially Connor, who was four. And at some point, he wanted to play baseball. And he kept going out for baseball. He just had the worst time. And it was coach pitch. And it was t-ball. And he's playing t-ball. And he's practicing. And he keeps swinging the bat way up in the air. And I go, no, Connor, lower the bat. He finally lowers the bat way down past the ball. He hits the tee. And the ball falls off the tee and dribbles forward about six inches. And he goes, Dad, I got a hit. And I just went, man, I just didn't have the heart to tell him that's not how you do it. You actually have to hit the ball. But he goes on to keep going and turning out for baseball for almost 10 years, from 10 to 14, about maybe 13 years old. He's always going to practices. He's going to the batting cages, doing all the things, but he never plays. It's heartbreaking, just heartbreaking to sit in the stands and watch your son not play. And so finally, there's this game, and it's the bottom of the seventh inning, and his team is behind seven to six. And there's two outs and there's a guy in second, and third, and there's nobody and it's the bottom of the seventh and there's nobody left in the dugout on Connor's team. So the coach yells down, is anybody left? And the assistant coach go, well, Connor's down here. And I went, oh, great. I'm in the stands just hoping for says, We'll send them out because they were out of players. So Connor comes out to the thing and he's swinging the bat like he's Ken Griffey Jr. He's never even been up and stuff. And I'm in the stands doing the only thing I can think that's logical is I put my hands like this and just went, how about a bunt? You know, how about a hit by a pitch? Just anything. There's guys on second and third, they're down by one run. 
So he goes ball one, ball two, strike one, strike two, full count. Next pitch comes in. He just rips it into left field. It goes just inside the third base bag, goes into left field. The guy from third comes in and scores. That ties it up. The guy from second rounds third, comes to home. The ball comes in. The catcher catches it. They crash together, and they fall on the ground, and the ball pops out. And the ball is rolling on the ground. And they win the game eight to seven. And here's Connor out on second base, about 60 or 75 feet away, standing there with his arms folded. And he yells to me in the stands, Dad, I got a hit. And I'm telling you, it was like the most critical moment I've ever seen. I couldn't even talk about that story for many years because it got me so choked up. And they won the game eight to seven. The dugout comes off the field, or the dugout rather, puts them on their shoulders, carries them off the field. And that night, when I told him, I said, you know what? It was never about baseball. It was the fact that you just never quit. And both he and Kyle, my older son, both were impacted greatly by Dana's loss, but they never, ever quit. Kyle went on to do all sorts of great things and graduate from the University of Washington. And now he works at Microsoft. And Kyle, uh, excuse me, Connor, became student of the year his senior year at high school and was on the baseball team. And oh, yeah, he was the leadoff hitter because he just never gave up on it. So something like that. Anything that illustrates not giving up, gratitude is no different. You've got to do it every day and you got to focus on it and just keep building, building. It's like building a muscle. And then we'll get to this gratitude journal in a second. So it just is something that if you take it bit by bit, brick by brick, it'll make such a big difference. So I'm going to tell you too, this is not so much homework, but I want to suggest that people consider this. I call this the daily gratitude walk. You don't have to write anything on this, but I'm just going to mention it's something that I do. And that is, is every day I go out for a daily gratitude walk. I shoot about three or four videos. I have my video on my phone and I'd send one to Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. And I do different videos. They're all about gratitude, depending on the audience in terms of which one of those social medias is I'm sending it to. But I call it the daily gratitude. Gratitude walk, 10,000 steps. It takes about an hour to maybe an hour and 15 minutes, but make a commitment to do a daily gratitude walk and get your steps in, however many you can do, exercise plus feature some focus on gratitude for the day. What is your focus or your theme for that day? I have a different theme every day on all five of those videos. And one of them the other day was just being grateful for having things to look forward to. I'm always looking forward to these talks. People tell me, they say, well, you know, we're so, uh, so grateful to have you. Thank you so much for coming. And I always say, listen, it's a two-way street. I get a tremendous amount of, of uh, enjoyment out of spreading this message and helping people to cope because what this really is, is a really healthy coping mechanism in a world of many unhealthy coping mechanisms. Dana got hooked on Vicodin and Oxycontin and died at 38, as I mentioned, when she overdosed. And I don't think that she'd want it to die, but I will tell you that's ways that people get hooked on this stuff. The reason they start smoking, drinking drugs, prescription, in many cases, is because they're trying to get through the ups and downs of life. And when it's down, it's tough. Well, I've got a good solution for you. Gratitude and the gratitude journal can make a big difference. So the science of gratitude. Let me tell you about this. People understand that. It said in the video, better health, better sleep, better relationships, and so forth. Well, they've done a bunch of studies. So this isn't just Dave Brooke out here telling you that, woo, woo, this makes a difference. But listen to this from these studies and research. I'm going to read this pretty fast. Appreciating what we have measurably improves our relationships, our life satisfaction, our health, our sleep, and it improves our physical health, leading to fewer aches and pains, lower blood pressure, and less depression. Grateful people are more likely to take care of their health, exercise more often, we just talked about that, and schedule regular checkups. Gratitude reduces toxic emotions like envy, resentment, frustration, anger, and aggression, and enhances positive emotions like empathy, caring, and sympathy. Too much of our time is spent pursuing things we currently don't have. I think that is phenomenal to remember. Too much of our time is spent pursuing things we currently don't have. Oh, if I just had that boat, I'd be happy. If we just took this trip, if I just had a better wife, I just had a better husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, better job. It's crazy. It's like a cat chasing its tail. Focus on what you have and don't worry about that. The other things will happen in the future when they are designed to happen. Gratitude reverses that and realigns our priorities to appreciate what we currently have. Happiness is rarely constant. So although happiness is a fantastic goal, gratitude for the tools that get you there are more important couple more things, how easily we can lose sight of everything we have to be thankful for. When the circumstances of life become unpleasant, think about the last six months. It's been rather unpleasant. 
and how that's impacted us. We are our own worst critics and we hold ourselves to impossible standards and we continually compare ourselves to others. When I did that exercise about how your biggest cheerleader would say, would see you, I think if I had all of you write down your biggest qualities, it wouldn't be quite so flattering. Why we're so hard on ourselves, I don't understand. But focusing on gratitude will help change that. Science says that the more you choose positive and kind words to describe yourself, your health, your body, and your progress, the less anxiety you will fear. Anxiety and depression are going to be big things that are going to be definitely part of the, the future as we go through this coronavirus, depending on how much longer it lasts, and it looks to be lasting for, for some time longer for sure. Okay, next assignment. So speaking about the science of gratitude, I want to have you do another experiment we're going to try. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you about a minute for this. And what I'd like you to do, and just you, all I'm going to ask you to come up with is maybe five or 10 of these things. Later, I'm going to have homework for you to fill this list out, but I'll get to that in a second. I want you to, in one minute, and try to do this in priority order, write down the top most memorable events of your life. Could be personal, could be professional, could be your children, could be trips, could be anything. In priority order, what's number one as best you can think of it? Write five to 10 of the most memorable events in your life as fast as you can. I'll give you a minute to do that, go. Okay, and stop. And I'm going to have you finish this later as part of homework. So don't worry that you didn't get a chance to complete it. I just wanted to get you started on this list. And what I'm going to ask everybody is today is Friday, September 11th. I'm going to ask people to promise me, and I'm just going to have to trust that you'll do this, that you'll get this list done by a week from today, which will be Friday, September 18th. And here's the list choices. You can, you can build it up to the top 25, the top 50, or the top 100, whatever you want. But one of those three things, the top 25, the top 50, and the top 100, you can take your choice and get that done by a week from today. And I'm going to suggest for those of you that have your computers or even on a piece of paper, if you do it on a Word doc or an Excel sheet or something like that, it's easy because you can shift things around. And... This will totally shift. You talk about the science of gratitude. This will shift your mindset. I was walking down the wrong path one day, figuratively speaking, and thinking, gosh, I haven't been to Paris. I haven't been to Italy. I haven't been over to Africa. And I was thinking about all these things I hadn't done. And then it occurred to me, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. You're the gratitude guy. Why don't you look at this the other way around? What are you preaching all the time, teaching? And I started writing down all these things, you know, airplane pilot, owned my own airplane, national champion, hydroplane diver, bungee jumper, two phenomenal kids. And I started going thinking, oh my goodness. And it totally shifted my mindset. So I came up with a hundred things. And the number one thing for me was the birth of my son, Connor. Number two was the adoption of Kyle, my older son. And then it went on down. And I think somewhere in the top 10 or 20 was speaking to 10,000 soldiers because I never thought I'd speak to that many people as I continued on this speaking career. So, but I put it in priority order. And if you're ever having a bad day, look at that list and you'll be amazed what it can do for you. Just like that biggest cheerleader talks about you, it has sort of the same kind of effect. So I'm going to ask you to do that and you'll be happy that you did. So all right, next, moving right along. As I say, I just talk fast, sorry. Um, gratitude journal. Gratitude journal, you saw the picture of mine in there. This is what it looks like, the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. I put in the chat my links to the different things. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can buy a gratitude journal on Amazon. But the whole concept here is, you can get this one. 
uh, it sells for $15, but you can get a spiral notebook too. It doesn't really matter. I just want to encourage people to start doing this every day. It says the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. And up in the left-hand corner, there's a little saying, and it says, if you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. They have proven over and over, I do a lot of research on these things, that when you write something down, it plants in your brain better than anything else. This keyboard I have on my laptop here is fine. You know, the little tablets, the cell phones, all those things are fine. You can talk. I'm so grateful to Susan McConnell and Kathy Burroughs and Bernie for being online today and inviting me here. You can do it, but it's not the same. It doesn't plan in your brain is writing down on a piece of paper. I am so grateful to talk to Kathy Burroughs today and have a nice discussion and get to do this talk today and so forth. It plants it in your brain. So I highly encourage people to write in this journal and then I will tell you how it's formatted here. Here's a blank page. This is my own journal that I use. And it starts out here and it says gratitude today. It says the day and the date. So today's Friday, September 11th. The daily number is over here. There we go. I'll get to that in a second. There's two lines for current events and special occasions. So if you have anything going on, you don't have to have a diary. You can put everything in here and all your stuff is in one book. There's five or six pages for five or six pages. There's five or six lines for what you're grateful for. And then there's a little two line uh, thing at the left bottom that says the highlight of your day. We're going to get to that in a second. On the right-hand side is your gratitude tomorrow. This is where you write what you're grateful for that hasn't even happened yet. For years, I wrote, I was grateful to be speaking to hundreds of people. I just started out. I was just speaking to small little groups of 10 or 15 people. And then pretty soon, it was 100. Then I wrote, I'm grateful for 1,000. Then I spoke to 1,000 people. And then I wrote, I'm grateful to be speaking to 10,000. I hadn't spoken to 10,000. And then the soldiers. Now I write, I'm grateful to be speaking to a million people. And a million people have seen my videos on YouTube. So it plants your brain forward about things you want to do ahead of time before they haven't even happened yet. Your subconscious mind cannot distinguish between what it thinks has happened and what actually has happened. So that's gratitude today on the left, gratitude tomorrow on the right. So that's how it works. So next exercise, on your piece of paper, make some room somewhere. I mentioned daily number. So what is the daily number? The daily number is kind of like taking your temperature. And this is one of the reasons why on Zoom, I like it because people are by themselves, they're not sitting next to anybody. And maybe your daily number where you're gonna sort of assess your mood right now isn't as good as it might be. But so it's nobody's business except you, whatever that number is. So I want you to write your daily number down. 10 is the best, one is the lowest, and you can do halves. So if you think, gosh, I'm in a pretty good mood, I think I'm a seven and a half or eight, if I'm having a really tough day, I'm a four, if I'm really down, I'm a two, whatever that number is, write that down on your paper and put a circle around it. Okay, so next assignment, and let's do, let's see, let's do 60 seconds for this one. I'm gonna have you do, one, two, three, four things. Number one thing you're gonna write is the number one thing you're grateful for in your life. If you only could pick one thing, and then number two, and then number three are the second and third things you're most grateful for, and then number four is the highlight of your day yesterday. It's 10.30 right now, so not much has happened on Friday yet, so what was the best thing that happened to you yesterday, Thursday, September 10th? I'll give you 60 seconds, go. Okay, there was 60 seconds, and sometimes it's not that hard to think about the number one, number two, and three things you're grateful for, but the number four is the highlight of the day, and you have to kind of stop and think what was the best thing that happened to me. So often for me, it involves talking to one of my sons, either on 
FaceTime or Zoom or what have you. So, okay, so you wrote those down. And here's what I want you to do again. I want you to now silently to yourself, just carefully reread each one of those four things you wrote. And then when you're done with rereading the highlight of your day, I want you to write another daily number down at the bottom. It could be the same number or it could have changed. In any case, read through them, write the number at the bottom and put a circle around that. Okay, so for those of you that are doing the in the chat, I would ask you to put a high five, just type it in if this is the case and I'll ask you on the screen to give me a high five. How many people by signifying a high five went from the top number to the bottom number, the bottom number was higher than the top one? High five in the screen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I can't tell on those, excellent. So there's a 60 second example of what happens when you focus on what you're grateful for. The number one, the number two, the number three thing, and then of course the highlight of your day, all really positives in your life. And I'm gonna tell you guys something that I didn't even think about to this very second, but it's really important. I did a talk yesterday, I did two talks yesterday. And I don't usually get a lot of Q and A, but there was a Q and A at the end and the guy goes, uh, I think his name is Brad. They, they have, Brad has a question for David. And he says, I live in one of these towns that have been hit by the fire. He said, so you're so grateful and you're talking about gratitude. What do you tell somebody who's lost all their possessions, lost their house and all they've got is their, their wife and their two kids? You know, and it, it didn't take me long to tell him. It's not go out and get a gratitude journal. It's not go out there and tell him he needs to be grateful. He's got his health and you can buy a new house and new possessions. Understand that that kind of thing is devastating. But I told him, I said, the best thing you can do is listen. And just listen and listen and listen more. And one of the keys I tell people that you should never forget, this isn't even in my program today because I don't do a module on listening today. The three most important, powerful words you can do when you're listening to somebody is these three words. Tell me more. Not let me tell you when my house burned down. Let me tell you when I had a trauma or any of that kind of stuff. Tell me more. And if you want a second one, you can, thanks for nodding your head, Diane. If you want a second one, you can use, and then what? But do not interject yourself into the conversation about, well, I'll tell you what happened when we had, we're not talking about that. We're talking about listening and being an active listener and so forth. So that's what can happen. So imagine if you just saw what happened with 60 seconds of focus on the three things you're grateful for plus the highlight of the day. What could be this? I've timed this a ton of times. It's five to six minutes. So imagine what you can accomplish in five to six minutes. And I'll tell you, just so you know who you're dealing with here, it's important to know who your speaker is. Here's Friday, September 11th. It's already written in my entire day. I never miss a day. I sell these books when it says up in the left-hand corner, Susan McConnell, I want you to pay attention to this. Wesley Holmes Talk is up in the left-hand corner because that's, I'm related, that's my, one of my current events of the day. I have a couple of coaching clients this afternoon, so I mentioned that in there too. But the point is I'm selling these journals at the table after my talks and this young man comes up and I keep mine very close by because they last about three or four months and I probably have 50 of these now and I put the dates on them and I go back and refer to them once in a while. It's really neat. But he says, is this your journal? And I said, yeah. And he says, can I look through it? And I went, yeah, like not too closely though, but you can look through it. So he just takes it and he kind of thumbs through it and he sees the day and I'd already written that day, of course. And he goes, wow, you write in this every day. And I just went, have you even been listening to the talk? Have you paid attention to anything I've said? Or you've been on your cell phone or something? I mean, no, I just write in it occasionally when I want to feel good. This makes me feel good every day. I will tell you about doing a talk up at a place called, a place, a city, Burlington, Washington. It was a chamber of commerce, 250 people, huge chamber of commerce. I went up there, but in the morning, I woke up, I was a two. Now that you see how I gauge that daily number, I thought, you know, I'm, I don't even think I can do my talk today. I was so depressed. I'd gotten this from my mom. My mom was manic depressive, and then she later got cancer and died. And she would do something to me, which I think is horrific for one of five children. She would call me when I was about 15 years old, and she'd get the phone and your pills by the phone. She'd shake her sleeping pills, and she'd go like this. You need to come and see me, or I am going to eat all these pills in an hour if you don't get over here. And I just went, oh. 
man, I'm going to high school. What am I supposed to do? So I drove over there and I'd sit down on the bed and talk to her. I mean, I don't know. I'm not experienced in all this, but I noticed that later she got lithium and, and got kind of straightened out. But in the meantime, I think I got elements of that. And so I decided I wasn't going to go down this pill route, but I'm going to do all these other ways to fight my depression. I'm going to exercise. I'm going to drink a gallon of water. I'm going to write in a gratitude journal. I'm going to hang out with positive people. I'm going to have vitamins. I'm going to have, get a good hour of sleep. I'm going to do something that changes people like this changes people and all those things. And if I'm still depressed after all that, well, then maybe I'm not, I haven't thought, haven't come up with enough ideas or something, but I definitely got a piece of that. And that day when I woke up, I was a two. I went to Starbucks, took my gratitude journal and thought, well, you better practice what you preach. And I went to the journal and went to the Starbucks, got a latte, and it helped me a little bit. I was maybe a four or five after writing it, just like you saw in that exercise. And then I drove up to Burlington and I did this talk, and this woman comes up to me afterwards, and they're buying a lot of journals, and she says, can I have a hug? And I said, sure, and I gave her a hug, and she goes, you just changed my life. And it, that was quite a while ago. I had never heard that. I hear that all the time now. It's extremely gratifying. And she, I said, well, what was it? She said, well, the story, this and that, and I'm going to get a journal for me, and I want to buy two journals for my son, uh, sons. And so I, I said, great, and we got that, and then I sold the rest of the books, and I went out to my car. I got into my car to drive back to Seattle and had a big smile on my face, and I kind of looked in the rearview mirror. It's always weird to look at yourself in the mirror when you think about it. And I'm like looking at the rearview mirror, and I'm smiling, and I'm just going, wow, you're now a nine or a nine and a half. So I'd gone from a two to a four or five writing in my gratitude journal, to changing somebody's life to a nine or nine and a half. And I always feel bad when I say this, but I didn't take a drink because I just, I've never been a drinker, smoker, drugs, I never did. Drink, smoking, drugs, prescription medication, all this crazy crap that people do. I understand why they do it. They're trying to cope, but I never went through and did any of that kind of stuff. And there's a holistic way to take my, use a coping mechanism that got me from a two to a four to a nine, nine and a half without using any of those things, which are very, very destructive. And in many cases, deadly as they were in the case of my wife. So it's such a valuable coping mechanism that you can use. It gives you this great Teflon or this great armor to protect you from all these barbs of life and these things that are coming at you when things have gone bad and people, I've lost so many people that have passed away. I'll guarantee you um, being on the Wesley board and meeting a lot of people, there's many people that the spouse is long since gone. It's tough. It's not easy. Nobody's saying it's easy, but it's tough. But here's a way that can blunt some of that effect and still have you focus on really the glass half full versus the glass half empty. But, and I'm almost kind of getting a little militant about it because my fraternity brothers, I meet with them once a month for breakfast. Well, now we do it on Zoom. And so they're the ones that nickname me. It says on the book, The Brooker. And now I call myself that gratitude guy for quite a few years now. And, but originally it was The Brooker. And they call me, I need a dose of the Brooker. And they call me and I'd say, well, I go, what do you mean? Oh, I need to be inspired. You're all so motivating. You're so inspiring. I need a dose of this. And I think, oh. so I would, I would tell them, tell me what's going on. And I go all through the thing. Now, all these years later, me being Mr. Speaker is that they say, they call me and they go, have you got a moment? And I go, what is it? And I need a dose of the Brooker. And they go, okay, let me ask you, let me just interrupt you right mid sentence. Have you written in your gratitude journal yet? And they go, no. So you know what I do? bam, I just hit my phone off, just like that, just cut them right off, just hangs up on them. And so invariably, 15 seconds later, they call back and they go, I think we got cut off. And I go, no, we didn't. I hung up on you. I said, because you haven't written in your gratitude journal. The militant part is I tell people, look, there are things out here that can help you be responsible. You got to pedal your own bike. I can be the training wheels. I can help you, but you have to pedal the bike. That's kind of how life works. So take some responsibility. If he had said to me, Gary or Rand or Chris, one of those guys had said, I've written in my gratitude journal. I drank my water. I got a good night's sleep. I did this. I ate the good food. I took my, you know, all those things that are healthy things, meditation, there's all to get the exercise, all that stuff. If they'd done all that and still were having a tough time, no problem. I'll help them. I can definitely do ways of helping. I do enough of this now. I understand and I coach people and I do so many speaking events and so forth. I understand how to answer most questions when it comes to that kind of thing. But it is a gratitude mindset and a gratitude journal in particular. The combination of the two will make such a big difference in terms of how your attitude can shift when you're having a tough day. When you're having a great day, it's fantastic. You know, that's the thing about life. It's like this. It's all up and down. You know, up is fantastic. Down sucks. When you're down, you want to be up again. But when you're down is when you learn all the lessons. 
you don't learn many lessons when everything's rolling and just running fast and high and everybody, oh, oh, I think you're great. That's fantastic. You learn it when you see what happens when you're down and how you handle things. So, okay, moving right along. That was the gratitude journal. Very important. Find yourself, find your talent, find your passion and find your purpose. I contend the most important relationship you'll ever have in your life is the one you have with you. And I think it's so critical. And I know when we have with our savior and I happen to be a Christian and, and I go to businesses, please don't talk about God. And I go, okay, fine. That's fine. So whatever works, but all I will say, if it's not the number one relationship, it's number two, it's so important. And I think that self-esteem is a big aspect of finding yourself and believing who you are. And I'm going to read through this kind of fast. If anybody wants this, you can get my information in the text and I'll give it to you. But this is 12 ways to increase self-esteem and self-confidence. Why do so many people behave badly? Well, you probably know I have a Ferrari and I'm taking this trip over here and we have quite a few many, many uh, millions of dollars and so on. People say that stuff to me and I want to go, look, you're talking to the wrong person. Are you trying to impress you or me? Why don't you go home and look in the mirror and talk to that person? I'm not impressed with your Ferrari and the fact you're telling me all this kind of stuff which is why I said, when you listen to people, don't tell them you have a Ferrari, tell them, tell me more and have them talk about themselves more. You'll have more friends and you know what to do with. So 12, we, 12 ways to increase self-esteem and confidence. Exercise, I've mentioned that a number of times. Minimum of a half hour, hour a day, move your body. When you look good, you feel good with more energy and better sleep. Gratitude journal, I've covered that a lot. Focus on what you have. It's five to six minutes a day. Help others. I do a lot of talks for rotaries and chambers and lions and Qantas, but especially rotaries, service above self for those of you that are Rotarians. If you want to help yourself, help other people and find somebody to help. This is another one you saw in that, in that video, I did bungee jumping. I've done all these crazy things. Do something you're afraid to do, whatever it might be. It's incredible how that will help your self-esteem and your self-confidence. Talk to a stranger. Just walk up to somebody and start talking. Oh, I couldn't do, I couldn't do that in Starbucks. I couldn't walk. They think I was weird. So do something like that. Do something fun. I think that's number five. I think it's really important to give yourself permission to goof off once in a while. We're so crazy. We're always having to push, never get enough done. And it's just crazy. Watch yourself talk. Number six, incredibly powerful. I happen to, now see, let me look at names here and I can see Willa and Levon and uh, Fire Tablet. Let's go. Oh, I see Fire. Uh, Diane, Sue, Barbara, Blythe, and Ed, you know, and it shows I generally don't forget names and I make a point of remembering names because I like it when people remember my name. So remembering names is very important. And I'll say to people, well, I remembered your name and they go, oh, I, I never remember names. I'm terrible with names. And I go, keep saying that you'll always be terrible with names because that's what these two ears hear as opposed to, gosh, I normally remember that name. I'm really good with names. What? Uh, oh yeah, that's Diane. That's Diane Collier. I remember her. So it's so important to listen to your self-talk affects your confidence big time. And I have this too. Create a heartwarming emails notebook. I have a notebook that has emails, text, it's just notes, cards. You've changed my life. It's about this thick. And anytime I'm having a tough day or my confidence is under attack, I go read those heartwarming emails. And it's just amazing how much that'll boost your day too. Here's another one I thought was really good. Smell great. If you're a woman perfume, if you're a guy cologne, they've proven that that has a definite connection with your, the olfactory system in your brain. And it's just like the smell of cotton candy when you were at the fair. Think about what, that, what image that conjures up in your mind. Less TV. When you watch less TV, your attitude goes up. They say max, maybe one hour a day. Listen to music. Music is extremely powerful. You know the songs that impact you in a certain way. It creates a positive image in our brain. Setting goals. I'm a huge believer in setting goals. I've got my day today and started early this morning. And then my Wesley talk at 10 and a coaching client at one and another coaching client at three and just all these things. And it's just neat because it gives your brain a chance to relax because you've already got everything down on paper. And last but not least is number 12, learn how to accept criticism. Be sure to consider the source. You can develop your own armor or Teflon coating that protects you from negativity. So I do all these videos and I've now got trolls. Trolls, for those that may or may not know, are people that take shots at you on all the social media platforms. So I'm going to tell you guys in about uh, 10 minutes, if you want to get my Monday Morning Minute, I'll give you a little uh, code you can text and get my Monday Morning Minute. But it's a one-minute video that goes out every Monday morning, 60 seconds on gratitude, different subject every day of the week, every week rather. And so 
I've had to learn though, accept criticism because the trolls come out there. And so what I do is I shoot the video as I do a lot of them. Those I do in the studio, but a lot of these I do on my cell phone. But, and I do them when I do that gratitude walk and the, the right one's the gratitude nugget and one's the daily gratitude walk. And so that's the Monday morning minute. Well, what I do is I put it on YouTube and I post it on Saturday and then I send it to Constant Contact, which sends it out. I think Susan and some of the other people, maybe Bernie, they may get that, but uh, I think a number of people have signed up off the Wesley board. But anyway, but it goes out Monday morning about 6.45, 7 o'clock in the morning. So it's just easier to post it on Saturday. It's just, I have tons of things to do. I already got my to-do list for tomorrow. Monday morning minute, post it. I just put it on, usually half a dozen or so people watch it early, but it's, it goes out to about three or 4,000 people on Monday morning. So I get this text, I get this comment to the day on, my, on the YouTube thing. This is Monday, you're posting on Saturday, dumbass. <laughs> dumbass, I don't know if I've heard that word for a while. I thought it was Dumas. But anyway, it's just, you know, there's always going to be people like that taking a shot at you. You know, you just get it. If you look at it the right way, you'd see that he got it just a little bit early. So, but I think when you find yourself, you really, this connection that we have with ourselves is so important. And, you know, you've heard this a million times, put the air mask on you first and, and then put it on your child or you need to build a strong foundation. I remember I was down in Reno once and, and I'm not too big to admit this or whatever, but my friend was at a slot machine and we were playing slot machines. And when the, uh, this day and age it was 10 years ago or something, it was all the quarters would come down. It wasn't the little piece of paper or whatever. And so he puts in a quarter, he wins a thousand dollars. So the coins are just, it just cascaded for quite a while and, and the bells are ringing and he's going like this and Brooker, come here. So I walk over there and I'm standing next to him and the quarters are still coming down. And uh, he says, I'm buying dinner. He says, I'm going to, this is on me. I mean, this is incredible. And I just, I, and I thought, God, Rand, I'm so happy for you. And I'm just kind of patting him on the shoulder. And as I'm looking at that, I'm thinking to myself, I'm really happy for him. I'm really happy for him. But I'd be just a teeny bit happier if it was me that was winning a thousand dollars. And you know, people go, oh, look at you. you no, I'm just telling you the truth. Most people, I don't think a lot of people would admit that, but I just, I'd be happier. I'm happy for him, but I'd be happier if I won the thousand. So the thing is, is that's where you get that great connection with yourself and it's so important. And then next is find your talent. Now I'm gonna say something in a minute about the ages of the people on this call. I can see I'm in the, right in the ballpark of that. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me how old you are. It's never too late to what doesn't matter what it is. And I think find yourself is the connection you have with yourself. Find your talent. What is your talent? Lean yourself towards the talent. Make your strengths productive. Make your weaknesses irrelevant. That is so important. Make your strengths productive. Make your weaknesses irrelevant. If you wanted to be a football player and you're five foot one and weigh a hundred and a quarter, it's probably not going to happen. So you may want to think about adjusting your talent to something else. I wanted to be a speaker. You might have caught it in the video when I was 19 years old. It took me 45 years to become a speaker. Seven or eight years ago. I just turned 70 in January. And I'm telling you, it took me a long time. But you know what? Better late than never. And I finally got there. And I think that it's because I found out what I was really passionate about. And I think that if people wonder what they're passionate about, I always think, think about if you had a million dollars a day in the checking account every day or some money that you, you could, couldn't possibly spend. And what did you want to be when you grew up? And would you do it for free? Those kinds of things. And it's never too late. Gosh, John Hausman was 71 when he won an Academy Award for uh, the paper chase. And he just started acting a year or two earlier. Colonel Sanders was 63 when he started KFC and Mary Kay Ash and Ray Kroc and a lot of those people are like in their 50s. Sam Walton was 45, biggest retailer in the country, in the world maybe now and so forth. And it just makes such a difference. But I got to tell you, back to this relationship with yourself, here's a $20 bill and this is how you see yourself. This is so important. That's why I like it on Zoom when it's just individual people. I'm not looking out into this whole group. It's individual people at your computer. And if I handed this $20 bill through with the computer to you, I think most people would take it if they said there was no strings attached. And so then I go like this. Now, if I crunch up this $20 bill, it looks like this. How many people take it? Again, I think most people would take it. If I put it on the ground and stomp on it, hit it with my feet, crush it, and then unfold it, like this, I think most people would still take it. So, but if I look at Andrew Jackson and I say, Andrew Jackson, you're a piece of crap. You're worthless. You don't even belong on this planet. And I don't even know why you're even here. You know what Andrew Jackson would do? Andrew Jackson would look back at me and he'd say, well, Mr. Speaker man, you can say whatever you want about me. I'm still worth 20 bucks. 
And he would be right. He's still worth $20. So my question is, and I include myself at the front of the list on this, why do you let somebody crush you, step on you, tell you that you're not worthy? You do not believe you're not even worthy to be on this planet. It's happened to most everybody, I would su submit, pretty much everybody. And then worst of all, devalue you from 20 to 15 to 10 to five to the worst of all, zero, and let them get away with it. Well, one of the ways you can combat that, self-esteem, self-confidence, and a gratitude attitude. Attitude of gratitude makes such a big difference. So, and then finally, I think once with the, after your passion is your purpose. And to me, I just, I just wanted to be a speaker when I was 19. It just, it just took me 45 years. I was 62, 63 when I started seven, eight years ago. And it just took a long time, but I finally did it. In fact, I was working at Lowe's. I was running a Lowe's home improvement store. And it was December 26th or 7th, a couple of days after Christmas. And I came home at two in the afternoon. And Connor, my younger son, who's now 26, was 17. And he says, what are you doing home? And I said, I quit. And he goes, you quit Lowe's? And I said, yeah. You quit being a store manager? And I said, yeah. And he was sitting on the couch. I was standing, looking at him. And he looks up at me. He says, what are you going to do now? I said, well, I'm going to be a speaker. And he looks back at me and he goes, well, that's just super dad. <laughs> it wasn't quite what I was looking for from Connor. But nonetheless, he says, but now I have a question for you. What are we going to do for food? And I said, well, you know what? Just trust your dad. I'm pursuing my passion. I always wanted to be a speaker. And so when you get a good connection with yourself and when you get figure out what your talent is. I've always loved managing people. I've managed those big stores, five, 600 people. That's always been a talent. I've understood what people's skills are, understood how to listen, tell me more, and then what, and so forth. And then you find what your passion. I'm extremely passionate about gratitude. That's why I said, I just can't imagine just going, I hope you're getting something from this talk. This is all about gratitude. I just, can't, I just can't imagine being that way. And people say, you talk so fast. I go, I know, I'm sorry, but I'm really excited. It's just, it's something I want to, if I change one life today, one different journey, it's worth it. And in many cases, there's a lot more than that. So it's really fantastic. And then you'll find your purpose and whatever that purpose may be. And that's why I'm always telling people my age and talking about John Hausman and people like that, because it doesn't matter how old you are. And speaking of purpose, Bear Bryant, when he got a bunch of championships at Alabama, he quit and he died like two or three months later. Joe Paterno got fired at Penn State, and like two or three months later, he was dead. Andy Rooney was working at 60 Minutes, and I think into his 80s or 90s, he, his last day of work. And then like two or three months later, he was gone. Why? Because they didn't have a purpose anymore. And so when you find a purpose, it makes such a big difference. So I'll tell you one more, exci one more assignment. If you want to help yourself, actually, I got two more. If you want to help yourself, help other people. We've covered that before. It's so really important. And I think even during a tough time like this, you know, ask yourself, what can I do to help somebody else? What can I do to make this a better place? You know, volunteer at a food bank, church, homeless counter, anything you can do, help just one person make such a difference. You will feel so much better. So homework, and I'm going to trust you that you're going to do this, is I want you to promise me in the next week, you'll write down the names of three people you'll reach out to to just say hello or help or support in any way you can. Just three people. They can be personal. They can be professional. They can be family. They can be friends. And just so you do that, it'll make you feel so much better. So, okay. We got a couple more things I'm going to cover and I'm going to wrap up. So people ask me all the time, how can I get more gratitude in my life? So here's one way. That Monday morning minute that I asked or told you about, write this number down, 42828. 42828. And on your cell phone, go to your text and type in, in the number part at the top, 42828, and then the message, put in grateful, G-R-A-T-E-F-U-L, grateful, and hit send, and it'll ask you for your email, and then you'll get the Monday morning minute every Monday at about 6.45 in the morning. So 42828 in the number, and the word grateful in the message. And people always say, well, what else can I do? How can I add more things to my life? So that's one thing. Uh, the gratitude journals, I put a link in the chat. It's the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. You can get them on Amazon. And that's a really good one. And then also, too, I always mention to people, too, that I'm so appreciative of these opportunities to, to speak. But I also ask people if they have any referrals for other speaking people, because I go to all size audiences from one, as I said, up to 10,000. 
And if you can just think about anybody you might know, and maybe they're part of a group or a company or an association, uh, corporation, anything like that, that bring in speakers to talk, please let me know. They, the, the information is in the chat, but my email is david at that gratitude guy. So that's pretty easy to remember. And then also, I, I do a lot of coaching and a lot of people that really want to get the gratitude sort of template around their coaching. And I offer people what I call a 60 minute consultation. And it could be you, could be a child or a friend or something, but definitely let me know because I meet people on Zoom and we spend an hour together. And then at the end of the hour, I offer them some help and so show them some pointers and maybe some nuggets that can help them. And then I ask them if they're interested in coaching, but it's very low key and very much just um, uh, basically kind of like on a referral type thing. So if that makes a difference, definitely let me know. And you know somebody, it could be you, could be somebody you know. So, all right, last thing we're going to talk about today and I'm wrapping up, is sharing gratitude. So I talked about getting gratitude in your life and, and finding yourself and your talent and your passion and your purpose, the gratitude journal, all these different things. And the last module I have today is sharing gratitude. There's something about sharing that makes everything better. If you got phenomenal news today, who's the first person you'd call that you wanted to share that information with? Well, probably the chances are pretty good it's your best friend. It should be whoever you're closest to, but whoever that person is, is so critical to know that they get to share this with you. So uh, I'm going to ask you to do, I call this the four T's as in the letter T, telephone, text, tweet, or tell. And I will tell you most people, if I can't tell from all you people that don't have the cameras on, if you have a phone handy, if you do, I want you to text somebody, but at the very least, write them a note today. So you do this to somebody and that is you're going to text, tweet, or tell or telephone somebody and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. And you must use the word grateful. So I'll give you 60 seconds to either text, tweet, not many people do that, write a note to somebody and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. And please use the word grateful, 60 seconds, go. Okay, and stop. And if you're through your text, great. If not, you can do more. I will tell you, I feel very fortunate, as I said earlier, to go from junior high and high schools up to senior centers. And in junior high and high schools, in 60 seconds, there's about five or six texts. It's unbelievable. I've never seen fingers move so fast on an object in my life on their device. Incredible. So, and then the senior centers, I help people text and I kind of, when they get their phone out and I'll, I'll make sure they're getting it to the right person. But I'll tell you, it's how I wrap up and I enjoy it because some of the stuff that I see and hear, people will come up to me afterwards, like the book table and they'll show me their, look at my text. And they've texted somebody and the answer says, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? And I thought, wow, that's pretty hardcore. I'm just trying to be nice. And then another one showed me and it said, are you sure you sent this to the right person? <laughs> so you never know but one that cracked me up was a lady that was in a performing arts center and she was calling and she was like in the first row on the edge and the seats went up at an angle like an opera house type of thing and I was on the stage at a podium and so she was about 10 feet from me and I could hear her. she was talking loud enough I could hear her and she goes yes honey I just want to let you know how grateful I am for you she used the word grateful and I'm assuming her husband and I just was thinking about it and I just so appreciate you. I'm so thankful for you and I'm so grateful for you. And I just, I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> and you don't get it. It's your idea, not my idea. 
put, you take the responsibility. Don't tell you somebody else said to send flowers. It was me. So anyway, it's so powerful. And I will just tell you, as I said earlier, if I impacted one life today, it's worth it to me. And, but it's such a powerful mechanism, gratitude, an attitude of gratitude and a gratitude mindset. I am convinced through my life, I could tell you a lot more stories of bad things that happened to me that would be up there with the best TV, I might think. But it doesn't matter when you apply an attitude of gratitude and you have a gratitude mindset. I'm a huge, in case you couldn't tell, a huge advocate of a gratitude journal because of writing it down and it plants it in your brain. It can change your life. It can transform your life. And I think in my case, it saved my life. I'm not entirely sure I would be here without it because it's kept me framed in such a good way for so long. So if it can change and transform and save mine, it can change and transform and save yours. So that is my presentation. The Gratitude Guide, David George Brooke, thank you so much for being a great audience today. David, could you please give the, um, the um, definition of gratitude again? You said it a little fast. And I, oh, I really gratitude like turns what you have into enough. Turns what you have into enough. Yep. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Any other questions, yeah. by the way? I don't always get a lot of questions. How do okay. I uh, unmute all? Cancel. And this is Kathy. And for all of you who came, I'll be, I'll be, I'll send you uh, all of David's links to you oh, out and an Kathy. email, so you have those if you haven't been able to get them. So yeah, and they've got, and especially the how you can contact me if you have any questions, David. Yeah. If that gratitude guy's there, there's the link for the gratitude journal. You can sign up for my YouTube channel. I send a, I do two or three videos a week on YouTube, and of course they're all on gratitude. My sister says to me one day, "You do a lot of videos." I go, "Yeah, I do." And she's, "How all the platforms? YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, you know, channel, all this kind of stuff, um, LinkedIn. They're all about gratitude." I go, "What? <laughs> what am I going to tell you how to mow the lawn?" I said, of course, they're all about gratitude. I mean, I'm the gratitude guy. So anyway, but all right, you guys, Kathy, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Right. Thanks, thank Bernie. You. Thanks, David Snow. We'll see you all later. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much. Thanks, David. You